Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. I'm so thrilled. One of my favorite mystery authors is here. It's Reese Bowen with her new book in the Royal Spinus Mystery Series. It's called Malice in the Palace. Welcome to Anderson's and Naperville. It is oh. so wonderful to have you here. Oh, well, thank you very much. I love, I love, I've been here once before and it was yes, lovely it, to come back. And yeah, it's great yeah. to have you back. You know, this book, the new book in the yeah, series, yes. is only, well, it's only been out it's in the two world. days old. Two, two days, days old. old, yes. So how, so how does that feel, you know, having, this is, I forget, this is the seventh? No, the ninth. Ninth. The ninth, ninth in this series. series. Yeah. Yeah. The ninth in this yeah. series. Yeah. yeah. But, but when you get that book and you let it out in the world like a new baby, yeah. oh, how does it feel? Do you know the thrill never goes away of walking through yeah. a bookstore and looking and going, oh, there's one of my books on a shelf. <laughs> yeah. And I can tell you, um, I had a huge thrill. I was in Poland. They, uh, my other series comes out in Polish. And I was there for the Warsaw Book Fair. Oh, how cool. And so I had oh, to yeah. go and speak and sign. And in, in Poland, they take their mysteries very serious, or their books very seriously. Yeah, you they know. Do. So yeah. lots of people yeah. sort of interviewing me and taking photos and things. So they took me down to Krakow, and I'm walking around the main square in Krakow. And I looked in the bookstore window, and I said to my husband, oh, look, there's one of my books. And that was kind of cool. And I looked, and then I went, oh. The whole bookstore window was a display of my oh, books. That's, that's so never cool. happened to me here, so which is cool. amazing. You know, and the other mm -hmm. thing, I know you've been published in other languages, but yeah. what, what do the covers look like compared to what you know, gets yeah. published in the UK? With, with, gets Always published makes in, me yeah. laugh. Well, yeah. I mean, the difference in what people think is a good cover. The UK ones, to me, always seem very primitive. Mm. I mean, over here, we. I think my covers over here are very evocative. Oh, I think you're. I mean, both the Molly gorgeous. Murphy and these just absolutely say what the book is, which right. I love. Yeah. My Japanese covers, the Molly Murphy covers in Japan, the first one she came with red, sort of red hair sticking out like this. She looked like something that had escaped from a mental asylum. <laughs> oh, and then big red freckles on her face. So probably that's how they wanted to. How they portrayed depicted the, an Irish immigrant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. That's so yeah. interesting. Yeah. So the book only out two days, mm -hmm. and being the ninth book in this series. Yes. What are you hearing from your fans of this series and about about this new book? And I know because you know some of them have already read it. Oh, yeah, they get that. Yeah, I mean, readers. well, yeah. Publishers Weekly said it was the best so far, oh, so I have to oh, like that. Wonderful. But no, right. several people have, have really liked it too, and yeah. I think I think that that whole um, delicious mix of having a real royal scandal as part of the right. story yeah. is what in, people like. You know, they love the royals anyway. And if you can talk about the real royals and then mix in some scandal, I think I that's know. kind it's, of fun. Oh, yeah. It makes it yeah, very, so very, it's fun, very, to, fun yes. to write. Very yeah. tasty. Yeah. Very tasty. So the heroine in, in this yes. book, yes. She, she is a singular woman mm -hmm. and uh, just incredible. So Lady Georgiana. Yes. And and the thing is, she, I love her name, Georgiana Charlotte Eugenie. Yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah she's actually Victoria Georgiana Oh, I forgot, Charlotte oh, I forgot Eugenie. the yeah, Victoria. So she's got, yeah, she's got four yeah. names. Yeah. 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 And do you ever get tired of writing her? Oh, and, no. Or, or you no. love, every time you sit down, you're, oh, you're you know, to be you know back what I love them. is because, you know, some they're funny. And I sometimes yeah, will, right. I will sometimes be laughing, and I will sometimes call out to my husband who's at his computer in another room, hey, listen to this, listen to what Queenie says, you know, yeah, and right. it's fun. Yeah. It's, it's fun oh. to do. No, and I, I think it, because everyone who reads this series, yeah. and I, when I hear them talk mm. about it too, they cannot wait for the next one mm -hmm. because they feel, well, feel like she's a friend because yeah. it's told from the first person. Yeah. And she's, such, yeah. she's such an interesting, fun-loving, I mean, everything about her is, is so great. Um, so tell us, where did the seeds for this series and this oh, character, okay. where did it begin? And, and this, this one especially because everyone, there's so many royal watchers around the world. Mm -hmm. and, and knowing yeah. that this is, you know, it does have the royals and we have a yeah. murder and we yeah. don't want to oh, give yeah. too much away. No, no, we spoilers. No, 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 no spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. But tell us where the seeds for this whole series started. Well, for the whole series started with me being bloody minded. Um, my other publisher, you know, I write the Molly Murphy series, right. which are much more serious than this and set yeah. in New York in the early 1900s. My publisher kept saying to me, we can't really break you out unless you write as a big, dark, standalone novel. And I kept thinking, oh, you know, serial killers, child molesters, <laughs> terrorists per poisoning the water supply. Sure, sure. And then I thought, do I want to spend six months in darkness? You know, you turn on the TV and everything's depressing anyway. Sure, sure. And I thought, right. okay. Well, what is the, what's the silliest heroine I could come up with? And I thought, well, how about if she was royal? That would be fun. But how about if she was penniless? How would she survive? You know, where, right. obviously she can't go and work behind the counter in Woolworths if she's, if she's royal. So right. how would she survive? And so once I started writing in the first person, just came to me so easily, yeah. just 
you know, literally came as if I'd been talking that way all my life. No. So, you know, sh there she was. She was 34th in line to the throne yeah. when the series started. Now she's 35th. Yeah. But, um, you know, and, and so there's so many... That first book had so many real things that, mm -hmm. you know, I've mixed with some... Well, my husband's from a very aristocratic family. He actually has a cousin called Fig, who I don't, oh. I don't like very much, yeah. so she, she <laughs> appears as the nasty one in the book. No, he has oh, cousins course. with lots of yeah. silly nicknames. She, yeah. In fact, we were over there about a month ago, and we had Puff to dinner. Puff is an 83-year-old, very distinguished lady, but she's called Puff. You know, so, I mean, it still exists. In no, England. those, those and, nicknames yeah. are always yeah. so wonderful. Yeah. So, wonderful. so um, yeah. uh, you know, so a lot of the stuff I used from my own experience and background right. and things. And in the first book, there's, when we first meet Darcy, one of the first things he says to her is, do you have a posh frock? Uh -huh. And she says, well, yes. And he says, go put it on. We're going to crash a wedding. Yeah. And I had a friend who used to do that really? in London. Oh, yeah, yeah they, used, yeah, they used to, they were very poor. They were both going to art school. They had no money. Mm -hmm. And so he'd say to her, go and put on your posh frock. There's going to be a wedding at the Dorchester. <laughs> and so they both moved in, in you know, they were from good families. Right. And so nobody sort of queried that they showed up at these weddings. Right. Well, they the, knew how the bride always yeah. thought they were with the groom, and the groom was right. so they got a good meal out of it. And yeah. then, if there was going to be a sit-down dinner with places, they would quietly slip away. But <laughs> in the meantime, they'd had their champagne and canapes. You right. Know? So, so and Darcy, you know, her, yeah. her bow oh, throughout yeah. this series. Yeah. So he's kind of mysterious in his he own He is, way. yeah. So, I, so I, tell us a little bit about him because I find him fascinating. Well, you know, I wanted I wanted sort of someone to fantasize about, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> uh, so Someone said to me, you know, his name, Darcy O'Mara, did you, did, was it any influenced in any way because yeah. of Mr. Darcy? And I said, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see, you know, that scene with Colin Firth coming out of the lake, I think about Darcy. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of us think yeah. of Darcy when we think <laughs> of that. My, for my, sure. very, my yeah. distinguished <laughs> editor, I met with her after about the second or third book, and I was expecting her to say, now, I want the prose to be a little more. And she said, do you think Darcy could take his shirt off a little more? <laughs> So it's always fun, yeah. No, oh, I mean, sure. I wanted him to be yeah. a bad boy, but not a really bad boy. Right, a, a, right. Someone we don't know if he's good or bad. Yeah. Someone we don't know if she can trust. Right. And, um, you know, he lives by his wits. He, like her, has absolutely no money. And we're finding as right. the series goes on more about his backstory and yeah. why he has no money, etc. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and we don't know really if he's sometimes employed as a spy. He might well be, right. but he obviously can't tell her if he is. So, right. And he, um, that's what I think in each book you just yeah. want a little, little bit more. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. yeah. so interesting to see how his character yeah. Yeah. Is, goes along. So I, I've always wanted to know about your books and, and, and writing mysteries. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and everybody does it differently. But what do you start with first? you start with a body? Do you start with a motive? Do you start with a, a killer? Do you start with your main character, as in Georgiana? You know, yeah. she's, she, she's yeah. your, you are her. You yeah. are thinking yeah. as her. Yeah. So, so wh what do you start with when you, when you think usually, of a new book? I usually, well, in this series, I usually start with a situation. Wouldn't it be interesting if she had to cross the Atlantic with her mother, as in mm -hmm. Queen of Hearts? Wouldn't it be interesting if she has to go down to a stately home and educate the heir who has been found in the back, backwoods of Australia? Um, and then I start with that. Often I don't know who's going to be killed. Right. And someone's going to wind up dead soon. You know, I very rarely know who did it at the beginning. And um, it's one. It's, I like. I write in. It's funny because my friend Jacqueline Winspear and I, we oh, ex exactly, exactly the same yeah. way. We both write in panic for about the first fifty pages. Every single book. I start off and, and I go through this whole thing. My husband's heard it a million times. This one's going to be no good. You know, they're going to ask for those Agathas back. They're, I'll never make the New oh. York Times list again. You know, oh, it's going to be hopeless. I'll, you know, there'll be no story. <laughs> and then after about 50 pages, oh. I think, oh. And then we get going. And then by 100 pages, I think, oh, this is all right. And then yeah. by 150, we're moving along nicely. And obviously, I could plot out the whole thing. I could sit down and write a very credible mm -hmm. outline. But if I did that, by the time I'd finished it, I'd say, oh, well, that's that book done. Let's go on to the next one. Right. Because I like to be surprised, too. Well, that, and that's what I always ask yeah. my authors about, yeah. you know, whether you, you outline. And, and for a mystery, yeah. especially, mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of like the way you entertain us is the way you're entertaining yourself mm -hmm. yeah. and, and when you're writing these, yeah. these, these stories. So, and and yeah. it, I, can, I can guarantee, literally, every single book, someone says something I'm not expecting. Yeah. I've got a dialogue, and they're talking, and someone says... Oh, well, did you know that? And I think, 
oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then it's fun, you know, then it, I like to be surprised. I like to, I like to feel when I'm writing that I'm the person standing behind the drapes mm. and I'm watching what's going on. Not right. that I'm the puppet master saying in the next sure. scene you're going to do this. And yeah. Um, yeah. it entertains me too. Yeah. It's, fun. Yeah. it's fun, yeah. Well, and, and, and what I love about your books too is that you put so much humor into mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And plus those, there's, you're always throwing those red herrings. You're always throwing us off. Like, <laughs> oh, you're never going to guess this. And, and yeah. you do, you throw yeah. us off. Yeah. But it's, yeah. a, it's a balancing act. And yeah. I, I find yeah. that interesting how you do that. Yeah. Still keep us entertained. Not deliberately at all. It just okay. comes. Yeah. It comes. Well, see, that's, yeah. what, that's what's yeah. so wonderful. Yeah. So Georgianne, is she, is she part you? Is she friends? Is she family? Because I find her to be, she's, she, she's sort of, in the time period you're writing, mm -hmm. she, she's ahead of her ahead of her time. Mm -hmm. You know, in some ways, yeah. She, in some ways, yeah. but she's 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 an inquisitive, extremely smart yeah. woman. Um, and I think, but is she, who is she? Where, where did her, the composites come from? To make um, her? There definitely is an element of me in her, and it, it's actually becoming more. In fact, somebody wrote to me not too long ago and said, "I've just seen your photograph." And I thought you were the same age as Georgiana. And I thought, oh, well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I had to write back and say, no, unfortunately, I'm not the same age as Georgiana. But, but um, no, I think we have a lot in common in that she is a good detective. She's a good observer because she spans two universes. She, sure. um, uh, you know, uh, she comes from this very royal and very staid background. Mm -hmm. But her mother was an actress and her grandfather is a New York, uh, uh, an English cop or a former Cockney policeman who right. lives very simply in London and who speaks Cockney and who's just very lovable and down to earth. Yeah. So she doesn't really fit in with either. And I think that's been my problem all my life, not my problem, but my luck in many yeah, ways. Sure. That, you know, my, my father was a Cockney, my mother was well educated. Um, I, when I was at college, I knew I had several friends who were very upper class, you know, who had the butler and had the big stately home and of course I didn't quite fit in there. I was always, mm -hmm. a, you know, an awed observer when I right. went there. And then I came to move, live in America and of course then I'm an outsider to start with there. So I've always had this feeling of being on the edge. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that I can get such a good feel for Georgiana now when I go back to England is I'm the observer there now. I don't live there. Oh, yeah, and if I sure. go to, like we stay with John's family all the time and they have the manor house and the stately home and all those things. And if you sit there and you listen to them talk and they say such silly things, you know, they say, oh, do you remember that joke we played on the butler that time? And, <laughs> you know, I get my little book out and write <laughs> sure, it all down. Right, <laughs> right but, sure, sure. So I think being yeah. the obs outside observer is very useful to me. And like, I'm afraid, Georgiana's taken on some of my characteristics when I'm in moments of stress, I have been known to be a little clumsy. And, um, you know, if I'm going to give a speech in half, I'm wearing white, I thought this is a bad idea. Um, you know, if I'm about to give a speech in half an hour, that's when I will pick up the coffee and squeeze the cup and it will come down all over me. So, so I know exactly how she feels when right. that happens. So, right. Right. so uh, having known that, I've put her in situations where she has to suffer the way I suffered. Yeah. Do you remember in the very first book, there was that um, modeling scene where she has to, Happened to me, absolutely. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah That's absolutely. So interesting. No, I had I had a, like her a yeah. brief and disastrous yeah. modelling career, yeah. and I had to get into this outfit very quickly, and it was extremely tight. Would hardly go over my hips. I was a size two, and I thought this is ridiculous. This is the strangest outfit. And I did it up behind my neck, mm -hmm. and I came out. I could only take little steps, so I'm walking. And it's only when I'm out walking down a runway that I notice something flapping beside me. And I realize it's culottes and I'm in half of it, you know, and then I had to finish the whole, I mean, you know, so Georgiana had to do that too. Do that too. And my yeah. editor said, I think we have to take out that scene. It really is too silly. People won't believe it. Has it happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I mean, you must channel her. I, do, do you spend sometimes, oh, you're in your thinking like, like her. Yeah. Sometimes you'll find well, yourself or, or what would she think? You know, when I'm, when I'm actually in the process yeah. of writing, you know, I write two books a year. Right. So when I'm actually sure. writing, I'm focusing really much. I will wake up all the time and I will think, oh God, she'd never have said that, you know, and oh. then my brain's churning in. Sure, sure. And I find driving around in a car, like I'm doing errands or something is really useful because then I can talk through scenes to myself. 
thank God for Bluetooth. Now people think oh, yeah. I'm normal, you see. In the past, before we had that, I'm going around saying, how dare you come here? I told you, and people sort of veer away from it. <laughs> I, th I think that's so interesting when some authors read, read, yeah. well, e read dialogue, and they're, yeah. they're saying it out loud, because yeah. it, it helps to hear it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I say a lot of things out loud. Oh, sure. I actually read scenes out loud to myself. Right. Yeah. Right. So in this book, mm -hmm. the queen summons Georgiana because yeah. yes. um, she's going to be having a new daughter-in-law mm -hmm. for her yes. son, George. Yes. So tell me, tell me a little bit about the basis on some of your royalty in this book. And, yeah. and also, have you done, do you do research on, because I know you write for it, well, the time period is yeah. that time period yeah. of the late 1800s yeah. into the, the yeah. you know, into the yeah. 19, uh, 1900s. Yeah. So, so you do research and tell us about the royals in, in this yeah. book. I try and keep, you know, a lot of people use royal, real people in their books. I try and keep the royals as true to what I know about them as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, I have read lots of biographies and autobiographies and things and you know the Prince of Wales's secretary wrote a big book about him and so I know their opinions on everything I mm -hmm. might not have word for word what they said right. sometimes I actually have word for word what they said for example in one of the books we meet Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret and Margaret's about three at the time mm -hmm. and going, giving an indication of what sort of person she's going to be and um, so uh, Georgiana who's her cousin says, hello, Margaret, and Margaret, who's of course three, says, you have to call me Princess Margaret because I'm a princess. Uh. So Georgie says, in that case, you have to call me Lady Georgie because I'm a lady. Uh. And so Margaret looks up at her governess and says, is a princess better than a lady? And her governess says, we hope a princess will grow up to be a lady. And that was real, so that right. I brought that in because yeah. it just oh, it shows yeah. Margaret yeah, sure, so right. well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I do try and keep them absolutely true to what they were. Right. I do have a bit of license with Mrs. Simpson. I know, I know her views on things, but mm -hmm. I do. There's a lot of witty retorts she comes with, of just me. Right. Right. But in this book, see, I'm I'm treading carefully because it was a real royal spe scandal. You right. know. Um, yeah. King George and Queen Mary had four sons, or they had a fifth son, as you know, who died in. Mm -hmm childhood. And so um, the first son was the Prince of Wales, who at the time I'm writing is dallying with that naughty Mrs. Simpson. Oh, yeah. And the second son is the one who stutters and who has two little adorable girls. Right. Who became king. Who became after king he afterwards, yeah. Right. The third son is the Duke of Gloucester, who was engaged in a military career, who mm -hmm. behaved himself very well. And then the fourth son was absolutely charming, very good looking, a very naughty boy. You know, he... Um, uh, in fact, his papers were sealed upon his death because people did not wish to know the length sure. of um, his, his scandals and everything. Right, sure. But, you know, he had affairs with both men and women, reputedly with Noel Coward, reputedly with Barbara Cartland, and these things I find quite I know, fascinating. I know, and that was, was so I said afterwards, why weren't her books more racy in this case? Well, then case? I wanted, yeah. to, be, I wanted yeah. to go yeah. online yeah. and say, are this, are this, that's really true. <laughs> because yeah. You, yeah, right. So, I mean, the, yeah. these, these are, I, yeah. you know, I read newspaper articles and things, so yeah. one has to think that they're true. Right, right. And also, um, with uh, a girl called um, Kiki Preston, who was known as the girl with the silver syringe because of her cocaine habit. Mm -hmm. And she was one of his former mistresses. And um, uh, reputedly, she had a child with him. Mm -hmm. And it was put up for adoption and um, by a very rich American publishing family. And the, the guy distinguished himself later in life because he married Lee Bouvier, who was Jacqueline Kennedy's sister. But unfortunately, tragically, he died in his 40s. Yeah. And Kiki Preston herself threw herself out of a New York um, fifth floor window yeah. and died. Mm -hmm. So everybody in the story had came to a sad end, sad in end. fact. Yeah, right. And um, so I think the king and queen were desperate to get George married off and right. settled down to a normal life. And um, so they brought over Marina, the uh, Prince Mar Princess Marina of Greece. Of Greece, right. I mean, yeah. the funny thing to me is that the, the family was actually Danish. You know, she's the cousin of Prince Philip. And, um, but in those days, the, the Greeks wanted a king, and they sort of went around Europe saying to someone, would you like to be king? Yeah. And he <laughs> said, well, um, well, where is it? And they said, well, Greece. And they think, oh, well, Greece, the food's not bad. Yes, okay, we'll be <laughs> That always struck me as very funny. But yeah, yeah. So they, you know, they bring her over, and for, from what I read, it really was quite a love match. They really were quite attracted to each yeah. other. 
Right. So maybe he would have settled down, except he died in World War right, II. So. Right. so, you know, the research, though. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot about the factual things yes, about, about yeah. the royal family yeah. and that sort of thing. But to get the feel of the era, because, you know, this is the ninth book in the yeah. series. Yes. Is, is there any research you do to get the, you know, the... You know, the clothing might, because it's very ah, visual. The yes, senses are yeah. very important and ah, yes. how you're feeling this time period. Yeah. Well, so. I can get the clothing absolutely right. Yeah. One of my dearest friends, as her ho hobby, what's well, more than a hobby, she collects clothing from the 20s and 30s. She has room after room full of, you'd like tea dresses? Open one huge closet. You'd wow. like um, cloche hats? Open the drawer. And so if I say to her, I say, Dinah, um, my heroine is going to the opera and she dresses me and I can look and see exactly what it looks like. And um, I actually wow. wore one of the outfits they had at a big conference. They had, um, they had a, a modeling show of um, authors coming as their sleuth. Oh. And oh, it was all, cool. and it was what also, fun. it had a twist too, because yeah. where in this outfit could you conceal a weapon? Mm -hmm. oh. And so I had this lovely um, sort of tangerine silk opera cape and it, it, it was beautiful. It was long. Of course, I could conceal the gun under it very easily, right. and that was very nice. Yeah. Um, and um, I also the shoes were from 1930s too. Oh, beautiful! And the thing was, it, they were lined with kid. They were just beautiful. Oh. They were so comfortable too. Yeah. So I was actually wearing an outfit from the 30s, oh, which is a lot of fun. So, so before you started writing all your mysteries, yes. um, you wrote young adult books, and I picture did. books. Yes, I did. And and under your married name, Janet Quinn Harkin. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that experience and how. How that helped you become such an incredible mystery writer and now having four different series for, mm. for adults? Um, well, I started off, well, I actually started a writing career doing radio and TV plays mm -hmm. in England. But my first books were picture books, which I've always loved, you know, and I enjoyed sure. the picture books. And then I was actually asked, my agent called me and said, could you write me a teenage novel in a hurry? And I said, oh, well, I don't know. And she said, well, I need four chapters by next Tuesday. So oh, no pressure there. Yeah, so <laughs> I, it, this was about 1979, so quite a while ago. I went to the library and I brought back the teenage books that there were, and of course there weren't many in those days. Well, and so I spread them in front of me and I was looking over them, and my husband walked behind me and he said, um, you don't write that sort of stuff. And so a little voice inside me said, ha. Huh. So I did do the four chapters and I was okay. given the go-ahead to write the book. And it turned out to be one of the books they were going to use to launch those this, the things called Sweet Dreams. Do you right. remember those? Sure, I remember they that were series. The yeah. first really, really popular teenage series. Right. And there were so a lot in that series. There yeah. were, but I yeah. mean, those first ones when they were so new, and it was so, it was so new for actually teenagers to have the money to come and buy their own books. Right. And so for for you know for a while it was on this enormous roller coaster. We'd go through a printing of a hundred thousand in a week. You know, oh, yeah. it was just very yeah. exciting. Yeah. And um, uh, you know, so I, I found myself on this um, treadmill really. You know, mm -hmm. and the more I wrote, the more people wanted. Yeah. And um, that was very good because I had four kids to put through college, and my husband had just been laid off from his job. Right. So, right. but you know, I got to a stage where I thought I'd said everything about you know going to the prom, not going to the prom, <laughs> moving away, coming back again. Sure. You know. Sure. So, um, yeah. and then I've always enjoyed reading mysteries. I grew up, you know, with Nio Marsh, Agatha Christie, and all mm -hmm. those, and they've always been delightful puzzles, but they've never really touched your heart. Right. And it was only strangely enough when I discovered Tony Hillerman. Oh, and I read okay. Tony Hillerman, and I was just blown away. I thought, not only have I got a mystery, I've got, I've got an insight into how other people think. I'm taken somewhere. This is a mini vacation. And I thought, yeah. I have to write this. I have yeah. to write something like this. And then I thought, well, where could I set it? And of course, you know, I live in California. You certainly don't need any more Californian sleuths. Right. Yeah. And I grew up in genteel suburbia, and you don't need any more of that. Yeah. And so I was telling a friend about my childhood experiences in Wales. My, yeah. my aunt Gladys used to take me to stay with the great aunts in Wales. And, um, you know, it was a very different kind of life. It was a small village yeah. near Snowdonia, and they spoke Welsh. And they really did have the people with the nicknames, Evans the Meat and Evans the Post yes, and right, Evans the Milk. And, um, yeah. uh, and so, that, you know, that was, that was interesting, the fact there are very few surnames in Wales. And right. So, That's so you know, so if, you, 
If you have yeah. eight people in one village called Evans, you have to give them each a surname. So it's either their, it's either their personality or their profession, profession. or whatever. Mm -hmm. There was one village in Wales had a travel agent called Evans there and back. <laughs> and then they also had an undertaker called Evans One Way. So, you know, oh, there that. are some really oh, fun ones. Oh my ones. God, that is, that is and, so fun. And then this village really did have the two Methodist chapels where the, um, where the ministers were constantly at war. And so I was telling a friend about this, and she said, oh, this is all interesting stuff. Did you ever put it in a book? And I thought, oh, oh my goodness, I do know this place. I've yeah, been taken up Mount yeah. Snowdon by every single route. You know, I know how the people talk. And so that's how the first Evan, the first one, Constable yeah. Evans series came into being. Yeah, so, so in, in a lot of your books, you know, the, your heroines, your, mm -hmm. your protagonists, are, yeah. s are such, they're, they're strong, mm -hmm. they're strong women. And mm -hmm. maybe a little bit ahead of their times. Yeah. But I think that's. I think you do that for a good reason. I mm -hmm. think you're channeling these characters, but yeah. it's also. I think that's how we get behind that person, and we can't wait to hear what mm -hmm. their next story is going to be. And and it, was that always your intent? And 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 also, when you wrote your first one, did you know that it would be such a long series, you know, the four <laughs> different ones? Yeah. Because there's not just one book. There's multiple books. Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, when I wrote Molly Murphy, was the first strong female that I right. wrote. Okay. And. Um, I wrote the book because I'd been to Ellis Island and mm. I'd been emotionally amazed by Ellis Island. Mm -hmm. I just, I hadn't expected to feel anything when I was there because, you know, I didn't have ancestors who came through Ellis Island. And I just stood there and I just, I just felt overloaded with what I was feeling. Yeah. And I thought, I have to put this into a book. Mm -hmm. And of course, standing on Ellis Island, looking across at that narrow strip of water and knowing that for some people they would never make that yeah. final, I thought, I, you know, this is the ultimate locked room mystery. And so then I had to think who I wanted to show this mystery. And I'd been itching to write a first person female because Constable Evans, much as I loved him, he was rather polite sometimes. Yeah. And I wanted to write someone who wasn't quite as polite. I wanted to write someone who didn't always know when to shut up or back off. Right. A little bit more like, like yeah. me, you know, I have, yeah. as I say, I, I've always, I spent a lot of time in school standing outside the principal's office. <laughs> um, not because I was rude per se, but because I spoke up when she was, when I felt someone else had been unjustly criticized. Right. Sure. Sure. Um, so I've got that in my temperament, you yeah. know, and um, so that, I think Molly's got that strongly. Right. But I'd sure. like to take up what you said about being ahead of their time. Yeah. We have this vision created by um, mainly men that the, you know, the, the women in Victorian times, Edwardian mm -hmm. times, were these helpless little flowers. Women were walking across the country behind covered wagons. Right. You know, Nellie Bly was flying around the world in 78 days. People were doing amazing things at that yeah. time, you right. know, and um, yeah. I think, you know, we, we, we tend to think of the women sitting at home and doing embroidery when they really, really weren't. weren't. Mm -hmm. So, wondering what, what are you working on now? And, and is there going to be another and, you know... Oh, the, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Someone, someone had just read the book today and emailed me desperately saying, <laughs> it's not the end of the series, is it? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and I said, no, yeah, no, many yeah. more to come. Oh, okay. um, well, I've got various things. I, I had a very busy year last year. I have a Christmas book coming out oh, um, with the Molly series. And um, because I'd done, as you know, the 12 Clues of Christmas for Lady Georgiana, yeah. and, and it sold very well. Yeah. So my other publisher said, would you do a Christmas book for us? Yeah. And I said, oh, yes, of course. But for Penguin, it had been the only book of the year you know, the one book. And so when I found out that for Minotaur it was going to be as well as, yeah. I said, you know, I can't do three books in a year. I really can't. That's, that's, and, that's and they a kept lot. saying, but we'll make it so easy for you. You don't need to turn this one into, and I said, however you do this, one year in my life, I'm going to have three books. So finally they said, how about if we made it, make it a bit shorter? So it was easier at that stage sure. to say, okay. Yeah. And then it hung over me the whole year. And, um, you know, finally I got it done and my husband said, don't you ever say yes to that oh, again, because yeah. I was yeah. so crabby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But so that's coming out in November. Okay, okay. And I'm just, and I've already finished next March's okay. Molly book. Okay. And I can't tell you much about that no, except no, that... No, spoilers. No, no ex here. well, I can, the only thing I can tell you is it takes place in March 1906 in San Francisco. Okay. all right. So I'll say no more. Okay, no more. We don't want to know. <laughs> no, more. Don't we want to be surprised. No. We need, we need and to now I'm just, I'm just okay. start. I'm just in the beginning throes of, of the next Georgie book. Okay. And as you know, I left this one with a rather cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. So we have to see how that cliff That's hangs right. when we get into yeah. it. But okay. um, 
it, life will not be easy in the next book, I can tell you. Okay. And, right. I, and I have a tentative title. It's called Crowned and Dangerous. Ooh, <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Grace, thank you so much for sitting down with me, and congratulations oh. on the new book. And please come back and see us when oh, the next one's out. Oh, I will. Thanks so series. much. Thank, thank you. you. Great conversation. If you love a mystery, you have to read this series. It's the Royal Spy in this mystery series by Reese Bowen. And the new one in the series, number nine, Malice at the Palace. Thanks for joining me on Authors Reveal.